So this morning, our topic is why worry? Why worry? And somebody says, why not? <laughs> There's a lot to worry about. <laughs> There's so much happening in our world today, you know, that should cause the heart to worry and to faint. But we want to remind ourselves of the words of Jesus to every one of us. He says, do not worry. Wow. Do not worry. You know, when I was reading the scripture again in the book of Matthew, I said, Jesus, how would you say, take no thought what you will eat, what you will drink, what will, what, you know, what will you, you will wear, you know. But sometimes we want to interpret the Bible based on our present circumstances, based on our personal experiences, you know, we want to try to be logical about it, but we forget that the Christian life is a supernatural life, that the Christian life is beyond the natural, and the sayings of Jesus or the things that Jesus asks us to do, they are not things that the natural man can do by himself. They are things that you can do by the help of me not to worry when the prices of groceries have doubled, you know, in about a few months, compared to what my salary had did not increase. <laughs> but the price of groceries doubled. And you say I shouldn't worry. Ah, Jesus, how would that be? How will I meet up all of those things? So to the natural man, those things don't add up. Ah, ah. How would the scripture say don't do this? Looking at the present circumstances, see the world around us today. Everywhere there is war, rumors of war. There is this sickness out there. There is that other virus out there. And Jesus is saying, do not worry. How is it possible to be able to live in this kind of environment without getting worried? We hear of people dropping dead. Great people, influential people, they just stand up and they fall down, and that's it. And you are like, oh, is there not a cause to worry? What is it going on in our world today? But Jesus is saying that to live this kind of life in the midst of chaos, in the midst of everything kind of going upside down we need the holy spirit to give us that peace absolute peace absolute serenity in the midst of all of these occurrences so we are just here to remind ourselves again not because this is new to us but it's good to remind ourselves over and over the sayings of jesus as we make progress in our Christian race, as we make progress in our Christian journey, as we move in life, we must bring these things back to our minds and tell ourselves, oh yes, this is what Jesus said. And that is the way we operate. That is the way we live our lives. So the topic one more time is why worry? When I was, you know, growing up much younger, there's this song we used to sing. Sam, I know th this one is old school, but I trust you. You are good at this. It goes like this. Why worry when you can pray? Talk to Jesus and he will answer prayer. Don't be a doubting Thomas. Brother, rise up and pray. Why worry, worry, worry when you can pray? Go. Oh, why worry when you can pray? Talk to Jesus and he will answer prayer. Don't be a doubting Thomas. Sisters, rise up and pray. 
Why worry, worry, worry when you can pray? I trust you now. <laughs> so, this is giving us a better remedy. That's why worry when you can pray. There is something better you can do. There is something more important you can do. There is something that will be more productive. Something that will produce a better result than worry. Okay? Our food for thought says, do not worry about anything but pray. Pray about everything. Pray about everything. If there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. Matthew chapter 6. Let's read the, the words of Jesus. I'd like to read it from the New Living Translation so that it will bring it home. I was, I'm going to start from verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. It says, No one can serve two masters. You will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Remember, take note of that word, enslaved, enslaved, enslaved. A good soldier that wore it. Remember that topic. A good soldier that wore it does not what get entangled with the affairs of this life. Jesus said, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. Take a look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautiful as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. I want you to say that to yourself. He will certainly care for me. He said, why do you have so little faith? So Jesus brought our attention to the cause of the problem. The reason why a lot of us worry. He says, why do you have so little faith? You know, most times we read the Bible. We read the promises, but we do not work with it. We do not really digest it. We do not really hold on to it in the face of real life situation. You know, we quote it. Maybe when things are going well, you know, we can preach about it. But when we come face to face with the issues of life, most times we are weighed down by those issues instead of focusing on our faith in God, focusing on what Jesus has told us. He said if God could so wonderfully, could so carefully take care of wild flowers, take care of the lilies of the field, the one that we see today, but they are no longer there tomorrow, he said he will certainly care for you. So don't worry about these things. Saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. That's why I told you initially that some of the things or the dictates that, or that Jesus gives to us, he says some things we should do, the natural mind cannot comprehend it. Because 
It is a supernatural life. So it says these things, all of these worries about what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. So it should be different for us believers because your heavenly father already knows all your needs. So is Jesus saying don't work or don't get about your daily business? No. Hard work is scriptural. Okay? But worry, 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 worry about all of these things is what Jesus is trying to address. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. The kingdom life. The supernatural life. That is the starting point. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and then live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring his own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Hallelujah. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own troubles. Today, sufficient for the day, is the evil thereof. So what kind of life am I expected to live as a believer? A life of faith and trust in the care of my Heavenly Father. That there's somebody that has got my back. There's somebody that is more interested in my welfare than I can ever be, right? Than I can ever be. There's somebody that cares more for me than I care for myself or my affairs or my children, all the reasons why I worry every day. There's somebody that is more concerned about it than me. So I should cast all my cares on him. As we have been learning all through this month, we have been learning, we have been learning Cast all those worries. Cast all, the, all those cares on him because he cared for you. Worry brings anxiety and fear. They are all related. Brother, sister, <laughs> cousin. <laughs> so anywhere you find worry, you find fear, you find anxiety, they move together. To those who permit it in their lives, very strong. Those who permit it. Those who, so those things will come. Yeah, they want to come to your territory and see if they are welcome. They want to come and test your faith to see if you know what you stand for. To see if you are really convinced about the promise of God you speak about. The promise you preach about. The promise you proclaim. Those things, those three, they will come to your doorstep. To see if they are permitted to settle with you. But Jesus is telling us, is telling us today, do not give them a chance. He admonishes us not to worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Philippians 4, from verses 4 to 6. Have you ever considered? Matthew chapter 6, 25 to 29, thoroughly. If God can take care of the birds in the air, the lilies and the field, how much more? You that you are called the heir of God. You that has been engrafted into him. You that, me that didn't really matter before, but he decided to love us with an everlasting love and he brought us to himself. He made us a part of him. He made us partakers of him. So if he cares for things that uh, cannot speak for themselves, things that cannot maybe fight for themselves, because I can go to the field and pluck a flower, pluck a lily and do anything with it, it cannot fight for itself. So if God still cares and watches over those things, how much more you and I? So the lesson today is just to encourage our trust again, encourage our confidence again in God, to say that this father we have, he cares for us. I remember the, uh, the message apostle preached to us that Jesus left a gift to the church. Before he left, he gave us a gift. 
And what is that gift? Peace of mind. Peace of mind. He said, I'm giving you this peace, not as the world give it. The world gives, but it will take away. The world gives, but it doesn't last. It's only temporal. But the peace that Jesus gives is eternal. Is the one that stays with you. Is the one you need. Is the one I need to be able to survive in these troubled times. Worry creates doubts and unbelief in our hearts. First Peter 5 verse 7 says, Cast all your cares on the Lord, for he cares for you. And he has given us, according to his divine power, everything that pertains to life and godliness. Amen? So when you recognize and believe that God's word is the final in your life, you will calm down. You will bring your heart back to order. You know, just like the psalmist, you talk to your heart. What is going on? Why are you disquieted within me? What is going on? Why are you worried? Why are you anxious? Why this fear? Where is it coming from? It is not consistent with my Christian faith. It is not consistent with the promises of God in my life. So why are you disquieted within me? Oh, my soul, I'm calling you back to other. I'm calling you back to a place of peace. I'm calling you back to a place of confidence in the arms of the Almighty God. The Bible says that we are graven in the palm of his hands. That means it takes time to look at us. It takes time to admire us. He takes time to care for us. He said we do not have an high priest that is not moved by the feelings of our infirmities. So he knows, he sees, he feels what you feel. And he cares for you. He's interested in your life. He's interested in all those things that is causing your heart to be weak, to be weary. And he's telling you this morning, and he's telling me this morning, that relax, my children, I've got your back. God is there to support us and to strengthen our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. We worry in the areas of our finances. We worry marital issues, family issues here and there. Children, welfare, well-being. We worry me, I worry about the weather. <laughs> Worry about the weather. Worry about the crisis around the world. Worry about the future. How would, it, how would tomorrow be? We worry about our health. Oh my God, this, ah, this pain. What, what can, oh my God. But Jesus is saying, my peace I give to you. Oh, my peace I leave with you. You know, I have somebody, anything, any little pain like this. You say, ah, what kind of pain is that? Oh, oh, could that be one? She will call one big sickness. <laughs> I say, never, <laughs> never, 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 not around me. You know, why is it that your mind doesn't go to another? Why is it that it's all those the big, big, terrible sicknesses you think about? No, that is the spirit of fear. Yeah, that's what the devil wants to captivate and capture the minds of. Believers that you begin to live in fear. Hey, hey, that man the other day they said he died though. It's just this pain, oh, the pain. <laughs> the pain at his side though. Eh? They said it's just pain at his side though. Hey, 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 hey. That devil is a liar. The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Who gave it to you? Who gave it to me? So anytime they show their faces, anytime they appear, we must stand up. We must arise and be, as believers and chase them out of our lives. God will give us grace in the name of Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And we must always engage him to help us in areas, you know, issues of our lives. What are some things we can do? Cast your cares on him. Cast your cares. Fix your gaze on him. 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 
and then fill your prayers with thanksgiving and with praise. I, I always say that. Don't let anything take your joy. Don't let anything take your joy. No matter what, let that joy be there. If it's going down and you are feeling really down, really, really down, there's something you can do. If you're not able to sing at that time, you can put on praise and worship video like there are tons and tons and tons of them. There are some that you will dance and dance and dance and dance and the joy of the Lord will come back to your heart again. You know, you'll be able to pick up yourself from that very low estate, you know, and then when that joy is coming back, you can begin to renew and remember what God did for you before and say, uh -uh, what's going on now? Did God not do it before? That God is still there. That God is still alive. He's still able to take me through this next one. Remind yourselves of the victories of the past. Remind yourself of what God has done for you before. Talk less about the gravity of the problem. And talk more about the power and the ability of your God. When you talk about the problem, it becomes magnified. But when you see God handling that situation, stepping in and dealing with it, I tell you, that thing will become very, very little. Understand that as a child of God, you can never be disadvantaged. You can never be disadvantaged. Scripture says everything is working together for your good. Everything is working together for my good. So if it appears that you are losing, it appears, ah, ah, God, this thing is not... <laughs> It's not looking like the, what you showed me. Uh, I think I did, it's like I'm the one in the losing place or I'm, I'm kind of at the disadvantaged point. Remind yourself that everything is still working together. Everything is coming together. Everything is coming together for your good. Remind yourselves about his promises. There are lots and lots and lots of promises. So when, when fear Worry, anxiety comes knocking at the door. What do you do? You take the word. What does the word say about this situation? What does God's word say about this circumstance? I begin to speak that word. I begin to declare it into my situation. And as you begin to declare it, you will see that things will begin to turn around for your good in the mighty name of Jesus Make God's word your final say in all you do and in all matters. Believe what he says concerning you. Believe it. Faith is an important weapon that destroys doubt, fear, and anxiety. Faith. And you saw Jesus said it. He said, why do you have so little faith? Why is your faith so little? Why is your faith so little? That's why we worry. So we need to build our faith. We need to build our trust. We need to say, God, I believe. Help my own belief. God, I believe. God, I trust you. Lord, I know you will not let me down. Lord, I know that you will not keep me in a disadvantaged position. Build your faith. Remember that God wants you to be free from worries and anxiety. Therefore, turn it over to the Lord. If God decides not to do it, there's nothing you can do. You will worry, worry, worry. It doesn't change a thing. Worry will only sap you of the joy of today. Jesus said, sufficient for the day is the evil there. So why not enjoy the day, the, the joy in that day? Scripture says he daily loaded us with benefit. Why not stay and enjoy the benefit of that day? Why now bring in the worry of the future into today? Oh, how will it be? How is it going to be? Ah, how long are we going to continue to be like this? Oh God, when just turn it over to him in prayer. He can handle it. He's the expert. Is the one that, that knows the end from the beginning. So we are just in the process. There's somebody that understands the entire script. 
There's somebody that, has, that wrote the script, so he knows where everything is going to end. Why don't you just entrust it to him, to his care? Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. If you do this, you will experience his peace. That peace is far, far, far more wonderful than anything the human mind can understand. Let his peace guard your heart. Let his peace guard your mind. 